Well, there's no other way. Redcliffe's school must stay open. That's the strong position the school, local community and politicians are taking to the government. And members of the school board delivered their submission personally to the Ministry of Education. It's now been handed in and the waiting continues for the people of Redcliffe School. The submission has been made by the school stuck in limbo, unsure of their damaged site and Redcliffe's will be returned to. In March, the Education Minister voiced her concerns over the safety of the site, with rock falls from the earthquake causing issues not just for now, but for the future site. However, Principal Kim Alexander believes they've got a good argument to save their former location. I'm reassured now that the chance of ever having the future, uh, education disrupted in the future is incredibly low. And the other thing I think that um, will really help the Minister make her decision is that the community has so loudly and f strongly said we, we want our school and we want our school back on that site. The board at Redcliffe School have been busy trying to answer the worries from Hekia Plurata saying they're more likely to be struck by other natural disasters than the face of the cliff rolling down again. With options being put forth by the experts the first time round. The focus of it was whether the site was completely safe or not. So it addressed what would need to be done for remediation, which was the idea of moving the school site forward and then building a protection wall and a bund. Uh, so it, it focused on that and the suggested remediation and the assurances the site was safe. But now the school has gone ahead with another, working alongside a geotechnical expert to see what disruptions the site could have in the years to come. The report saying the rocks should be the least of their worries. The potential, say, for a tsunami out in this area of Christchurch. And that showed then that Redcliffe School was uh, at no more risk, in fact less risk, than some of the other schools out, out on the side of Christchurch. Besides the primary school's proposal to the Ministry, around 2,000 other submissions have been made and she says she's happy with the support. People move to a certain area maybe because they love the idea of their children being able to walk to school, particularly in urban areas. Um, they want them to have those active lifestyles, walk to school, be really part of the community, uh, their friends live in the neighbourhood and that type of thing, and that's certainly the case. One of them is from Labour's Port Hills MP, Ruth Dyson, sharing her thoughts on the Support Redcliffe School Facebook page where over 3,100 people clicked like. Dyson says she supports a proposal to have the whole site reduced by 10% in size to provide for the construction of a bund to be created to stop the rocks from hitting the buildings below. And she goes on to say that geotechnical reports suggest the site is not at any risk from rockfall, proven by experts at GNS Science the group who analysed results in the Education Minister's report. That chance of disruption is so remote uh, to almost being non-existent to the point that the school would have to close. Um, it's easily remediated by the bund and even by positioning perhaps the, the playing fields towards the back of the school so if ever the bund needed to be reassessed, school could t continue. It's believed the interim process will take around six weeks weeks before the Minister will make her decision, another wait for the school. And then there'll be that period of anticipation and waiting again. But we're used to that, we've been doing it for four years and we're very happy to do it for a wee bit longer. For four years we've worked here at Van Ash and it's always been business as usual, teaching and learning first and we'll just carry on. Final submissions to the Minister are due tomorrow afternoon at 4pm. Jared McCulloch, CTV News.